Hey everybody, Kyle Mikey here from MLive.com, joined by Nate Atkins. Uh, we're in Indianapolis at the Indiana Convention Center, home of this year's NFL Combine. Well, the interview portions, um, this is where teams do a lot of their interviews with players, um, the, the, the official ones to the Combine. Um, players also go through some medical testing in parts of this building in the bench press, and the Lucas Oil Stadium is just across the way, um, where they have the obviously the, the, the field drills. Uh, that stuff will get underway tomorrow. Um, today, the big news was Bob Quinn and Matt Patricia meeting with the media. Nate, what was your big takeaway from our half hour or so with those two guys? Yeah, it was neat to see Matt Patricia kind of away from the dog and pony show, the or original press conference. Uh, he just seemed relaxed. You know, he came out, he had the pencil in his ear, his beard's kind of growing out a little bit, uh, <laughs> kind of dressed in a very casual manner, and he just just was kind of shooting the breeze. It wasn't super revealing, though, and that's yep. that's kind of an interesting thing so far because you heard a lot about you know New England and the way that they cover things up. Uh, he certainly seems more personable than Bill Belichick by about six miles, but you know we haven't really pinned him down on anything yet. And yep. uh, Bob Quinn was obviously more specific on those angles, but it was interesting to see Patricia just kind of keep almost every option open at this point. Yeah, with Quinn, I was I was curious to see which uh, I'm sorry with Patricia, I was curious to see which Patricia we would see, because the Patricia that New England players describe is different than the Patricia that um, that New England saw and that New England beat writers saw. I mean, he was much more buttoned up publicly. And I think that part of that was because he was trying to respect Belichick's wishes and the, you know, the kind of the, the whole motif of that organization. Um, but privately, I mean, he would, players, if you talk to them, I mean, they, they would, they, I mean, they would like die for this guy. I mean, they, there's a strong bond between Patricia and the players that have played with him over the years. I mean, just seeing even Kyle Van Noy, the way he described him, um, after only a couple of seasons working with him, is just uh, you, you can see the bond and the connection that, that Patricia has with his guys. That's just not something you necessarily saw publicly, mm -hmm. but I think we are starting to see that a little bit with you know since he's come to Detroit. Again, I mean, he talked in word salad. So you go back and listen to the audio. There's not a whole lot specific. I mean, I really tried to drill him on his scheme, and even that he couldn't say specifically what his designs were for the scheme. Uh, but he has been engaging. He's shown a little bit of his personality. He's talked about the meatball pizzas and the pencil and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I think you're going to get a more personable coach than we saw with Jim Caldwell. Um, I'm not sure exactly how much information we're going to get from the guy. That's the thing. Is there, he's, he will show windows of that football knowledge that he's – always had that's that's kind of let him rise up uh the ranks i asked him about jared davis and what he saw there and i thought he gave an interesting yep. answer just yep. about the challenges of a rookie linebacker from a vocal and, and mental standpoint just your first few games coordinating everybody on the field it doesn't really lend to maybe the type of players are going to go after and, and get here at the combine or in free agency yep. obviously that's a lot of teams aren't, aren't trying to give that that out there but uh He's an interesting guy. I'm just interested to see him develop that personality and character because today still felt it was relaxed, but it still felt like it had a little bit of a plan to just kind of keep everything so open. Don't pin yourself down on anything. And I don't know yet if that's him. <laughs> he was seasoned out the in that way. I thought you know, he's, yeah. a, he's kind of a veteran almost. Well, it could be. Himself in. That's what I'm curious to find out. Is yeah. is that a real specific plan, or is he just still feeling new to this whole process of being a head coach and finding out? what is his identity and what he wants to chase. I thought the most interesting football thing that Matt Patricia said was about his defense. Again, he wasn't real descriptive, but it's, it's obvious. I mean, we, we really drilled down a little bit. It's, it's obvious at this point that he's bringing, he's importing the Patriots uh, approach, which was his approach of a multiple defense, multiple fronts. Um, but obviously to do that in Detroit, which is going to run a 4-3 for forever now, it's going to require new personnel, different personnel. Um, they need personnel anyway on the defensive line where they're pretty thin. I think they're going to need another linebacker to different types of linebackers if they're actually going to run these four linebacker sets. I'm curious to see if Miles Kilbrew can maybe fit into that mold too. I'm, I'm not really sure what their designs are for him. Uh, I did ask about Jalen reeves Maben. I think they're pretty happy with his development, especially his speed, the speed he brings to the defense, but they want to see him gain some weight. Um, with the schematic transformation, obviously new players are going to be needed. Uh, different types of players and bodies will be needed to mm -hmm. fill it. I think that's what they're here at the Combine trying to figure out, just what kind of guys uh, can help fill this thing out. Yeah, you know, Bob Quinn also mentioned free agency. They're going to look to the second and third levels, you know, mm -hmm. where they've in the past looked at the first levels. This just happens when you start to lock guys up on contracts. Their money is in the offensive side of the ball. We know that with Matthew Stafford, with the offensive line. On defense, they're paying a lot to Ziggy Ansa this year. They're just not going to go out and sign superstars. They want guys that fit, you know, his defense, which sounds like it's going to be very multiple, very versatile. And so 
That's where they got to really master an event like the combine. You can find guys who do something very, very well in a, in a limited aspect, or you can find versatile guys who maybe aren't great at a certain thing. They're going to have to really hit on those draft picks because I don't think they're not giving the impression that they're going to go out and sign a, a huge free agent to go answer that side of the ball. They want to develop guys and coach them up, and that's obviously yep. what Patricia's here for. That's what we got for today, guys. Um, tomorrow is the first day of player activity here at the Combine, at least from a media perspective. We'll be talking to special teamers, offensive linemen, and most notably from a Detroit perspective, running backs, uh, Darius Geis and the whole the whole crew is going to be here. So uh, stick with MLive here. We'll have all kinds of coverage on the running backs. Uh, for Nate and Kyle, we're MLive. Keep it right here.